Binocular chairs are great. They're comfortable to sit in, and the erect images the binoculars supply make star hopping ridiculously easy. But they do present a few challenges to the observer. One of these is that no matter how carefully you position the headrest or locate the pivot point through which the binocular frame rotates, there's always going to be some minor misalignment between the, uh, your eyes and the eyepieces so that in some positions the eyepieces will press painfully into your eyes and in others they'll be too far away and you'll have to lean forward uncomfortably to reach them. My solution was to make a levered cam out of a piece of half inch plywood. I drew a two inch diameter circle, drilled a pivot hole a half inch off to one side, and when I cut the circle out I left a finger to act as the lever. As this is rotated, it pushes the binocular frame forward one and a half inches and it can hold its position at pretty much any location. What this allows me to do is do fine touch-ups to the distance between my eyes and the um, eyepieces so that I'm always in good viewing position. Another problem has to do with the use of star charts. You need one hand to move the binoculars push them away so you can see the chart. You need another hand to hold the chart. You need a third hand to take a pair of glasses and put them on because close-up glasses, even if you don't need reading glasses under nor normal conditions, are very useful for f seeing the fine detail in the star chart. And you need a fourth hand to turn on and off a flashlight to uh, see the star chart. As you can see, you've quickly run out of hands. What I did to solve this problem was to take a pair of three power, three magnification glasses, take the uh, ear rests off, and using a strip of metal, made a bracket to hold them in the proper viewing position so that I don't have to put the glasses on and off. This saves an enormous amount of time and effort. Another thing I did is, although you can't see it, underneath the, uh, the, the cradle that holds the binoculars, I have a red flashlight with an on-off switch. I can turn that on and take my hands away and I don't have to worry about it. You might think using a, uh, a forehead mounted um, um, binocular uh, astronomical light would be useful, but it tends to run into the eyepiece shields and it's, it's not very comfortable. This is much better. An important thing about your light, you want to make sure that it has an on and off switch and that you want it to have it off most of the time because even a red light will attract every bug in your backyard. So with these two additions to the chair, I've just picked up two new hands. One final problem is the surface on which the chair is uh, assembled. If you're on a cement pad, this isn't much of a problem. But I use my binocular chair in, for convenience in my backyard and have a nice lawn. And the problem with that is, is the lawn is a soft surface and the chair can rock and be unstable. It makes it hard to hold position. I tried cutting away some of the sod and mounting a, uh, a brick underneath each uh, foot and that helped but uh, that creates problems too when you water the lawn the uh, dirt underneath the brick can get soft and uh, lose its alignment and actually sink down and it creates problems. But fortunately there was a very cheap and easy solution. And here it is. I took a piece of half inch galvanized conduit from uh, the electrical department. You can get a 10 foot length of this in most hardware stores for two and a half dollars. I cut it into four lengths and then pounded them into the soil so that only about an inch stands up. Now my lawn is tall enough so that I can mow over this and uh, the blades don't even come close to hitting it, which is nice. At the bottom of each foot on the binocular chair, I have uh, drilled a half inch deep um, circle so that they fit into this and kind of locks it in position. Now what's nice about this is that uh, these are so long that no matter how much rain I get or how heavily I water, they're always solid. I used a level to make sure that all four of them were perfectly level and aligned and I found with these that I have an absolute rock solid and dependable base 
for my binocular chair. The only problem is, is that you have to watch out if you're walking around not to stumble on these, but they're so low that even that's not much of a risk. Plus, I have them located it at the uh, far rear corner of my backyard so that uh, they don't get much foot traffic anyways. As simple as these solutions are, I found they've greatly increased how much fun and how easy it is to use the binocular chair. I hope you'll give them a try. Thanks for watching.